Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. God blow far from us, all dark despair, all deep distress, all groundless fears, all sinful desires, all Satan's snares, all false values, all selfish worries, all wasteful worries. Blow into us your holy presence, your living love, your healing touch, your splendid courage, your mighty strength, your perfect peace, your caring concern, your divine grace, your boundless joy. Wind of God, blow strong, blow fresh, blow now. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit On the mountain, when my God spoke, out of God's mouth came fire and smoke. All around me, it looked so shy. I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit my heart, I will pray. Oh, Jordan River is chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There ain't but one train it's on the track. Runs to heaven, runs right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, Let's 
scripture portion for today is found in book of Romans chapter 8 verses 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs to deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. May God bless the reading of this scripture. In our lives, we lose so many things along the way. Sometimes we lose monies, we lose material things and face hardships. Sometimes we lose friends and we feel alone. At times, we lose family and wonder whether God cares. Eventually, we will lose good health and become dependent on others for our survival and day-to-day -day life. But most profound of all the losses that we suffer in our fragile human lives is when we lose hope. Without hope, there is no meaning. Without hope, there is no purpose, and without hope, there is no life. We see around us many people who continue to live without hope. We read the newspapers and hear stories of people living in despair on the news channels, people migrating to foreign countries because life in their own homeland is full of hardships. They hope for a better life. In my state where I live, around me, I see and read the news of so many farmers who are committing suicide every day because they have lost all hope. The land is not producing enough and the government is not doing enough. People around the world are facing dire situations and feeling hopeless. I remember my youth when I, when I was searching for the truth, when I was trying to make a sense of my life, when I was trying to find a purpose in my life. I read a lot. I read lots of philosophies. I followed many gurus and I explored many religions to find a rational purpose of my life. I almost settled this ever agonizing quest and ended my search when I came across Buddha and the teach and his teaching. I studied Buddhism with whole of my heart and it all made sense to me. After all, Buddha was a scientist of his own kind and he gave all the mankind a philosophy to live this human life. But just as I was getting settled on this question, a question came to my mind. Where is hope? If life, if life is meaningless, and in our very book of Ecclesiastes, the philosopher says the same thing. He talks about meaninglessness and vanity. If, there is, if life is meaningless, then what hope is there? Why should we continue to live? And this realization was quite unsettling and I resumed my quest 
for something or for someone that gave me hope. There are many among us who have lost hope but do not dare to admit it. Whatever our circumstances, financial crisis, broken relationships, devastating illnesses, unending losses, we have landed in a place where there is not one ounce strength left to endure what is before us. For us who are despaired, the promise of God is a lifeline. When we cannot hope for ourselves, the Holy Spirit hopes on our behalf. The church endures with us. The whole creation groans in solidarity. And we are not alone. One of the requirements of my seminary education was CP or clinical pastoral education. While I was completing my CP and uh, working as an intern chaplain at the University Hospital of Indiana University, I learned the meaning of just being present, the ministry of presence. It does not matter what you do or what you say as long as you are being present with somebody who is in need, somebody who is suffering. And that is what I believe is the thrust of the Holy Spirit interceding for us with sighs too deep for words. A powerful sign that the Holy Spirit is very much present in our midst even when no words are exchanged. That presence can and does make it possible for us to carry on, to endure. The New Revised Standard Version or NRSV translates the end of the verse 25 as we wait for it with patience. But the Greek word here is hypomones which means endurance. We wait with endurance. Another verse from Romans illustrates the reality, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us, says Romans chapter 5 verses 3 and 5. The Pentecost story in the book of Acts chapter 2 tells us that the disciples and the people present were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter reminded them of the words of prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portraits in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Acts chapter 2, verses 17 to 22. Few years later, in my quest for the meaning of life, for the purpose of life, I found Jesus Christ, or rather, He found me. When I was in college, I became friends with an MK, a missionary kid, and one day he took me to a fellowship where somebody gifted me a copy of the Bible. One night, I started reading the New Testament. As I sat down to read the New Testament, I could not stop. I read from the book of Matthew to the book of Jude in one sitting, and I and it realized upon me that. Jesus Christ is the one who gave me hope. He is the one who told me the meaning and the purpose of my life and he is the one who told me how to live our lives. We are created to care for others and for this whole 
creation. Do unto others as you have them do unto you, said he in the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 31. This is the core teaching of the scriptures. This is the good news. Knowing that God is present in the midst of our greatest need is good news that enables us to endure. Can you find that where you are right now? In your circumstances, whatever they might be? What does it that look like in your life right now? Sometimes the Holy Spirit might be with someone in his or her suffering in the form of a brother or sister in the Christ by their side. Now that presence, my brothers and sister, is the ground for our unseen hope. That is the hope that we hope for. Amen. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes. From the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes. With bold new decisions, your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. At Pentecost, we celebrate two things. The first is the Word of God coming to us individually in, in ways that we can understand. And then because of that, the way in which the church grew, incorporating all of those individuals into the overall church. Here at the table, we're celebrating somewhat the same kind of things. We're celebrating that Jesus came for each and every one of us. And we're also celebrating that Jesus is our host of the whole church, all of us together, all of us as one. So come to the table as individuals and as a part of this great thing that we know as the church. Let's pray. Our Lord, our God, our friend, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for these symbols that remind us that Jesus came for each and every one of us to give himself that we might have life and hope. We also thank you for Jesus as the head of the church, the one who brings us all together as one. And we thank you that at this table we can celebrate our oneness together. So we ask that you bless this time. 
as we take this bread and this cup. But we also ask, Lord, that you would place your spirit in each of us, that as we go from this place, we would take your word to those in the world who are still waiting to hear it. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And so it is that Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, and he said, Take and eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is a new covenant which is poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. And so the table is set and all is ready. All are welcome. Come join the feast. benediction from the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 which says may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.